5904128. A. Be certain of God, Los Angeles, California, USA. Just fine then. The Lord bless you, brother. All things are possible in believe. Let us remain standing as we bow our heads for prayer. Almighty God, that brought again Jesus from the dead, we are approaching thee this afternoon in his name, knowing this, that you have given us the promise that you would hear. This is my beloved son, hear he him. And we come in his name to ask mercy and to ask healing and salvation for those who are hungering and thirsting for such forgiveness of our trespasses and praying that your spirit will cause many to come to thee this afternoon, both in this visible audience and in the radio land. We thank thee, Heavenly Father, for the morning services all around the world and pray that you bless every service and every minister and every church this day that's preaching the gospel. Come, Lord Jesus, and receive us into thyself. And while we are waiting, you are coming. Help us to be loyal servants, for you ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. I was enjoying some fellowship this morning with the Armenian people of the city at their church. And to my surprise, there was a lady who could interpret, interpret languages. That uh, last meeting I was speaking here, and it was the Holy Spirit was speaking rather, and was calling the people out in the meeting and telling them of their different afflictions and their diseases. And sometimes I couldn't make them understand just who it was. And then the Holy Spirit would call their name out, as you have noticed Him doing that. And then they were telling me this morning which visions to me are just like a trance. And they were telling me of a woman that I had called back in the audience back in the somewhere in the audiences and told her that a certain affliction had gripped her but she was couldn't understand me because she didn't she was from another country a Finnish woman and then the Holy Spirit to show that he has no respect of person spoke through here and called her name and told her to bless God spoke in a language that I didn't know and called the woman and gave who she was and something about to the Lord's blessing upon her something another in Finnish language I don't even know English, let alone Finnish, so it's God to show that God speaks in all the languages and all human beings belong to him. How wonderful. He is doing the exceedingly, abundantly. I do not wish to take too much of the time, but just while this on my mind, I remember some time ago at the Sam Houston Colosseum in, uh, down in Houston, Texas, and we were trying to have such an overflow crowd so we were trying to take care of part of them at the Colosseum and part over to Raymond Riches. Now I'm sure that the Angelus Temple knows who Raymond Riches is. He was a personal friend through the founder of this church. And I would pray over here for a prayer line. Then go over to the Colosseum and pray. And one night when my brother was taking me from the prayer line, I had a little Spanish girl weeping, and she would have been the next in line according to the numbers of the prayer cards I was calling. And she wasn't nothing but a child of 15 years old, something. Well, my brother started pushing me on, and the man that was supposed to take me, but somehow something told me, see that child? I said, oh, bring her here. And they brought her over, and she gave her prayer card to the man, and so she came over, and I began to speak to her, and as she just stood there, I thought she might be deaf and dumb, but found out she couldn't speak English. She could not understand one word of English, and so I asked if there was an interpreter, and they got a man and brought him up for the interpretation. Well, I asked her a few questions, and she began answering me to the interpreter, and then all of a sudden uh, the vision came, and I said, I see before me a little girl with a little plaited hair hanging down her back, she's sitting by an old fireplace, eating yellow corn from a cob, and been took from a kettle which hangs over the fireplace, and she's eaten too much of it. If she falls violently ill, and she's taken to the bed by her mother, and is thrown into epilepsy, and then the vision left. And the little girl turned to the interpreter and said in Spanish, I thought you couldn't speak Spanish, and the interpreter said you spoke English. Did you not, Brother Branham? I said, I did. He said, well, she said, you spoke Spanish. I said, stop the recorders. 
all along the row and they stopped and we played it back and every word was English and then we had her to repeat what I said and as long as the vision was going on she had every word in English well why here how here we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born God is still God now when I begin to say words within myself she didn't understand that at all but the Holy Spirit speaking English was interpreting it to her in Spanish God is a good God as our Robert places it certainly is true and if we could only grasp that this afternoon that his goodness to that little woman finish whatever she was last night to be sure that her faith would be recognized he called her in her own language wonderful now overseas many times we see that in the foreign countries that i'll be standing speaking and it'll turn right back around and use my language and call people in their names and everything just like it does here in their own native language that's what i call pentecost i believe it that's the holy spirit now the last few nights we haven't been giving out any prayer card for prayer line so i believe it would be in order tonight to have a prayer line to pray for the sick all next week beginning tuesday night we expect to go all through next week so you come out each night come praying bringing somebody with you the boys will be giving out prayer cards in about 35 minutes as soon as the service is finished here and you who want a prayer card just remain now they'll bring the prayer cards up here and give them out to anyone who wants them may the lord add his blessings to all that we do for we do it in his name now to our subject and to our lesson for a few moments brother david read the scriptures because i had just met an old friend the setting present this afternoon about two years ago i was up on the river of no return with my good friends the christian businessmen i'm allowed to hunt and they had a new guide this that year and i can't fell in love with this man a young fellow that and he would um, i liked him this de- seemed to be something about him that was a little more than a cowpoke and i had met his wife and she was a waitress at the restaurant at the place where we were eating up at north fork near salmon river idaho and on the road back it happened to be that god let this young fellow come to become a chum to me to hunt with me and i remember getting a good shot one morning at my elk way across the valleys and got him very humane and this young fellow was helping me skin him out and i was noticing him and i said to him jim are you a christian and I believe he said he belonged to some church or something another. But there was um, something about him that seemed honest. That night, when we went in, sat at the table, I kept watching him while he was laying on his camp bag, sleeping at first. By and I laid my hand upon him and asked God to save him. And today, him and his lovely wife meet me back here in the back. They're both Pentecostal believers. Has got the Holy Ghost sitting present now. Prayer changes things. Brother Gillespie, oh, he is so real. If you'll just pray and then believe that we get what we ask for. So that's why I had Brother Duplessis to read the word for me. I had just to greet him, Jim and his wife. God gives them a lovely little baby since then. We are happy. Now, Brother David was reading out of the book of Kings of Elijah the Great Prophet, and it must have been a terrible morning, dry and hot. They'd been Hadn't to be no rain for three years and six months. It was so dry and hot till the world was ready to blaze into fire. The people were starving in the streets and there was a cry everywhere. And this had been brought on because of the moral decay of the nation. Israel was loved of God. But when they got out of the will of God, the enemy taken them over. God loves his church. But when we get out of the will of God, the enemy takes the church over. And Ahab was the king of Israel at that time. And to my thinking, the most wicked king Israel ever had, because he married an idolater Jezebel. She was a sinner and an ungodly person, and instead of being a man of his own house, he gave it in to her. And through that they had caused the nation to come to moral decay. They had went after, brought the nation into idolatry, because that they uh, went after her idols. It's something similar to today. All the people agreed that it was all right for them to do that because the government the king and the queen endorsed it and they were the most honest uh, the most popular people in that nation 
And because the king and the queen did it, the people thought it was, it would be all right. Now, that's about the picture of a country today. Many people just follow one another. And they think because that the government has given the booth seller license to sell whiskey, that it's all right to get drunk. It's wrong. And many times, good women think because that the cigarette companies put these pictures out on the advertisements, the women smoking cigarettes, and the movie stars, and many of them, and the popular women smoke, that it's all right. That's what caused a more decay in this nation. The backbone of any nation is motherhood. Break motherhood, you've broke the back of the nation. And when I've got at a, uh, statistics that show that I believe it's about 80% of cigarette smoking mothers has raised their babies on bottles because there's so much nicotine in their blood, it will kill the baby just before it's 18 months old. You talk about a sabotage, that's one of the greatest sabotages the nation's got. And regardless of all the warnings that the doctors have put out, such slogans as cancer by scallowed and all these warnings that people want to follow one another. Because if some silly woman actress of some sort advertises cigarettes and blows it through her nose and acts smart, but that's not safe or thing for you to do, it's wrong. I was passing down one of your streets here a few days ago and I seen in a bar room, it said tables for the ladies. I don't mean to be rude and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but ladies don't go in places like that. They've uh, never had one in there. I'd imagine they have never had a customer and never will because it's not just for ladies but fine people sometimes see those things and see people who are up and up what we call them going to such places and they think that's the thing for them to do fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man but you see the king had said this is all right because his wife thought it was all right and they'd cause a moral decay. And then they thought, because of prosperous, no wars, and so forth, that was the sign that God was with them. Prosperity is not always a sign that God is with you. Many times that's deceiving. The rain falls and the just and the unjust. But it's by their fruit, they are known. So, and so this nation was really corrupted, and God had sent judgment upon it. All the preachers had bent under the heavy load, because the members of the church had forced them to do things. I feel sorry for a preacher that's got no more God about him than to let his congregation dict to him and get him off in a rut like that. I believe that we need preachers like that's men, that's God-fearing, God-sent, servants who are not afraid to call black, black, and white, white. The gospel has been handled too much now with kid gloves on. We need some old-fashioned preaching, like Billy Sunday and John the Baptist, and some of them old-fashioned hellfire, and brimstone messages again back to the people i know it's not popular so when they got away from that you see what a condition the nation got it in so it takes that brother and all that the pastors had given so they let the they had a social gospel no doubt and so but theirs was one who didn't give in there was a little old prophet in the land in that day he didn't bow down to any of the idols, for he knew that Jehovah was a holy God and required holiness and cleanliness and decency, for he knew that Jehovah could not change. And if Jehovah, to bring the children of Israel, had to cleanse them by san- and sanctify them, and when they walked disorderly according to his commandments, he placed judgment upon them. He knew that Jehovah was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, he would not give in. Oh, Jezebel hated him, and all of her company hated him, but God loved him and respected him because he never let down on the word of God. He stayed with it. God give us more Elijahs in this cruel, evil day of corruption that we are living in. That's not a sacred uh, to preach. What's the truth? But the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You must be cleansed from your sins by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Now, there was a woman in the land, neither one of these people knew each other, but she must have been an honorable woman. She must have been the type of woman that Elijah was a man because God chose that woman out of all the women that were in Israel to entertain his prophet. And he would have never chose an immoral woman to entertain his prophet. So this woman was a widow woman. The drought was in the land, and she started out after the death of her husband. She had a little baby to raise, and she was struggling to try to make a living for the little fellow. And finally the bread began to cease, and he came to a place one day 
when she went in to look at her little fellow and she seen his little sleeves out torn she might have looked at herself in a mirror and seen that how she'd left the table with something on it for the baby and her own cheekbones were sticking out and her little frail looking arm she didn't mind it for herself but the little boy she was trying she didn't want him to see him die so finally one day she went to the meal barrel and there was just one handful of meal left she goes over to the cruise and to see how much oil and just about a good tablespoon full that stood between her and death i suppose that night there was a all night prayer meeting isn't it strange how god lets us get right down to the end of the road no doubt but she checked up said lord god something like this i've served you i've done all that i know how to do i've met your requirements and here i've got one handful of meal and a spoonful of oil between death for my child and myself all night long she must have prayed and when the little fellow would wake up turn over and say mama would you go back to the cupboard and see if there's just a little bit of that bread left she'd go back cry a little and then she would come back and give him a little water to drink for she knew she could just had this little bit and it had to be maybe the next day and the little fellow maybe couldn't sleep good because of hungry i've been through those places but what is many here have been through those places i've seen my mother leave the table of a morning sat back in the house and cry when she did we what we had on the table was some stale bread and she'd pour some coffee over it and some sugar over the top of the kiddies or half kiddies and go back in the room and weep say i'm not hungry when she was hungry and i was trying to go to school like that and the woman as she seen those that would call ava coming no doubt she checked up and said lord i've done all that i know how to do when you have done everything that you know how to do and met every requirement that god has required that's where faith takes a hold that's where faith comes in if you've met every requirement that god required you to do then sometimes god tests your faith to see what kind of a reaction you will have on your action oh he's good at that he just lets it just proves whether you really believe what you think you believe you know he does that many times one morning there was some hebrew children was going to be burnt up and they knew that they had done god's will and they said we're not afraid of the king's commandments our god is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace nevertheless we will not bow to this image now god was going to give them a test to see what their reaction to the action would be and he let them walk right straight to the fiery furnace before he ever moved but when all of god's requirements has been met and you're certain of god that god will do it stand still then and god will do it if you sat in these meetings and you seen the lord god move out over the audience healing the sick and afflicted and yet you seem to have uh, still have your disease and when i ask for them to put hands on the other and you have made your wrongs right before him you have accepted him and you have been baptized in the christian faith and your heart's clean before him then sometime when god delays his answer he's only wanting to see what will react by just be sure that you believe that it's god and then hold on to it don't you move if you have been prayed for hands laid on you by believers the bible said this sign shall follow them that believe that's god's requirement and god requires you to believe his word job god let the devil test job once when job went out and made a burnt offering for his children they had uh, had a party so job knowed that is days what teenagers was like what they were made up of that mind that can't get settled and so job said perhaps what if my children did sin all of a, uh, a burnt offer for him anyhow and when he was standing pat on that offering that's what god required a burnt offering that's all he required to confess and to make a burnt offering and job knowed he did that and then the devil was turned loose on him and he began to kill his children destroy his goods 
and he had some of his church members come to him and said, you are a secret sinner. You've got something in your heart that you haven't confessed to Job. But Job knew that he hadn't done it. He was sure that he had met God's requirements and he stood part on that. That's it. He knew he'd confessed his sins, called for God to try to to try him, search him, and see if there was anything wrong. See, God was just waiting for s- to see what Job would do. Because Satan said, I'll make him curse you to your face. But God said there's none like him in the earth. He wouldn't do it. God had confidence in him. And maybe if your healings are lingered a little bit, God's got confidence in you that you'll hold on. If you believe that the Holy Spirit, the signs and wonders that he promised is being done here, then accept it and hold on to it. God's requirement and the Lord who heals all your diseases. When you receive the Holy Spirit, get born again and the devil begins to tempt you. Oh, you're wearing the same clothes you look like you used to, but you are sure that something happened inside of you. God changed your life. Don't make any difference what the devil said. Just get away from it because you're sure that it's God. Amen means so be it. I'm sure the Holy Spirit is here now. I'm sure of it. And I know that what we ask, we will receive it. It might not just uh, come just right now, but it's got to come. God's promise is true. We ask him for anything. We don't doubt. We believe that what we ask for, we get. Because we met God's requirements, given our life to him, surrendered our will to him, our life to and our soul, all that we are, have surrendered to God, then our heart condemns us not. We can have what we ask for. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. That's his promise. Just be sure that you know God and know that his promise. Someone said to me, many times rather, said, aren't you afraid, Brother Branham, when you go there at night time that maybe that angel of the Lord might leave you sometime? I said, I'm sure he won't, because he promised me he wouldn't do it. And I've got faith in God to believe that he will meet that requirement. That night at Portland, when that maniac ran out on the platform to kill me, you read the story, but you better be sure of it then. But I was sure that I wasn't trying to speak of myself when he called me a snake in the grass and spit in my face and said, tonight I'm going to knock you all the way out into the audience. I just stood still. He weighed... 250 or more, and I would 128. Hard to look up to him, those great big gently arms, and his teeth set, and his eyes, his fist drawn back, running towards me. And the Spirit of God said, Because you're challenging the Spirit of God, tonight you'll fall over my feet. That's what God, that wasn't me. And he said, I'll show you whose feet I'll fall over. And he drew his fist back to hit me. And when he did, I said, Satan, come out of the man. And he fell and pinned my feet to the floor till the policeman had to roll him off my feet. Just be sure it's God and then hold on to it. Stay with it. When God sees anything, he has to keep his word. But certain that it's God. Take God's word. If God whispers to your heart, I'm the Lord that killeth thee, stay with it. That's God's promise. God promises to give the Holy Spirit, stay with it until it comes. I was reading old Uncle Bud Robinson's book here some time ago, and he was plowing corn. He said with his old mule Alec, and he got mad at Alec that morning because she was tramping down the corn, and he beat her on the ears, and she ran off and looked at him. And he said, Alec, I'm ashamed that I beat you. He said, look here, my preaching sanctification with her teeth full of mule hair. He said, what a disgrace. And then he got ashamed of himself. And he got down in the row of corn and said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost, when you come back, you'll find a pile of bones laying here. Then he received it. Be certain it's God and then hold on to it. There was certain, she was certain she'd walked upright before God. And God proved it by inviting his prophet to live with her. See, God confirms things. So the morning was breaking, the birds was beginning to sing, I don't begin to break. She looked at this little fellow again and she patted him. She knelt down and said, Lord God, 
he will be getting up in a few minutes. I'll go and prepare the last thing I got and give it to him. And then I'll take him in my arms and we'll die together. So she went and got a handful of meal. Now meal was a meal offering, which means Christ's word. And when they grounded the meal offering in the days of the Bible, they used a certain bar that ground every little bit of meal that's exactly the same. There's no difference in it. Well, that types this. This uh, the same means Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When God ground his life out of him at Calvary, he gave it to the church that he to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then she goes and gets the oil. The oil represents the spirit. Uh, that, that's the um, why we anoint with oil. It represents the spirit. And she put the uh, oil and the meal together and begin to prepare it. And when the Spirit and the Word get together, something's going to take place. She was at the end, she's got the Word and the Spirit and begin to mix it together. Now it's ready for baking. She goes out in the yard to pick up two sticks. Did you notice the Bible said two sticks? Now in the old days, Jimmy, I guess, we have done it many times ourselves. You take two sticks and cross them out and you put the fire in the right in the middle. And as the sticks burn, you push them in. If you're camping out at night, it keeps the fire going all night long, pushing it in. The fire was in the middle. If you notice, the two sticks represented the cross, self-sacrifice. Now, she'd mix the word and the spirit together, and she was ready to put it to the fire. And she goes to pick up these sticks, and perhaps she's got, uh, she's just got the last one in her hand, and was starting back in the house, and she looked at the gate. There was a gentle-looking old man, perhaps bald-headed and whiskers, hanging down, standing, leaning across the gate. He said, would you fetch me a, just a little drink of water? She looked at him and thought, well, I've just got about half a gallon in the house, but the poor old fellow looks so thirsty. I'll be willing to divide it with him. And she might have said, yes, kind sir, I will give you a little of the water because the springs have dried up. And everything the waters had dried up and she was started to get the water and he knows you see god answers on both ends of the pine about two hours before that the brook had dried up on the top of the mountain where elijah was he said elijah go down to the city and keep walking until you find a woman with two sticks in her hand she's going to feed you god does things for real i've sent you down there and she's going to feed you she hasn't got nothing in her house but I'm going to feed you. And he walked down the street till he had seen that woman packing those two sticks. And that must be her. So he had to catch her attention. He said, would you fetch me a little water? And she said, I will. And as she turned and started, he said, and just bring me a little morsel of bread in your hand. Elijah, seeing that vision already, knowed what the condition was. And she said, as the Lord liveth, Elijah knew she was a Christian then, a believer. And as the Lord liveth, I've only got just a handful of meal and a spoonful of oil that I've already prepared and I've dressed it, got it ready, and I'm taking these two sticks to make a little cake for my son and I. And we're going to eat it and die. See, now here comes a little great lesson. But Elijah said, bake me one first. Oh, what is it there? What lesson do, do we learn? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Bake me one first. And she looked. She said, I wonder who that is. There's something about the man that seems to be different. And he said, make me one first and bring it. And she started in to do what he said. Then she had that confirming word that always comforts. For thus says the Lord, the barrel will not be empty, nor the cruise run dry until the day that the God sends rain on the earth. What was it that a very dark, crucial moment come, but God's always on the scene? If you're sure that it's God, if you've repented of your sins, if you've met God's requirement, then be sure that God will keep his promise. Ooh, if man and woman could only realize that God's obligated to his promise, and if you've met his requirements, if you've confessed your sins, and you've made your wrongs right, and you've done everything God has required, then hold on to God. You've got to see daylight. He's got to bring it through. Just be certain that it's God and he will take care of the rest. 
of it, if you are sure that it's gold. Some time ago, I was over in a little city in Arkansas, about 15 years ago, not quite that long. I'd say, I'd say 12 years ago, there was a, I have a terrible segregation in Arkansas, and I've been in the little church, and the policeman helped me in and out, and I was coming out of the church, and I could hear someone saying, mercy, mercy. I thought, where is that coming from? And I looked over to my left, standing over to me, stood a Negro man way out from the white people. He had this uh, little old cup in his hand, hollering, mercy, mercy. And something struck me. That man wants to talk to me. And I said to the policeman, I said, I want to go over and see that man. Oh, he said, Mr. Branham, you can't do that. You such uh, trouble here in Arkansas. He said, you can't do that, he said. We just can't let you do that. I said, but the Holy Spirit told me to go. He said, well, Brother Barnham, you start a race riot. He said, all these white people here to be prayed for, and you go over there to that colored man. I said, I can't help what kind of laws you've got. I follow the, a law, and that law is a law of the Spirit. And he said, go to that man. And I just pulled loose from him and went over there. And I had his wife say, be of courage, honey, the person's coming. And I got over there, I said, how do you do that? He had his hands out like this, he said, is you? I'm not saying this, disagreeing with my colored friends, either here on the radio, and near the real southern talk, and he said, is this uh, you, Pastor Barnum? I said, yes, I did. He put his hands on my face. He said, you are a younger man than I thought you was. Him blind, and he said, Have, uh, has you got just a minute? I want to tell you something. I said, yes, brother. I got as much time as you want to talk. I said, I've been a Christian since I was a little boy, and my old mommy said she's gone. She's been gone for years. And I said, I've been blind now for several years, and I got cataracts in my eyes. The doctor man said he couldn't take them off. They done wrapped around the optic nerve, and he couldn't take them off. And he said, I never had of you in my... Uh, life person, but Branham, but said last night about nine o'clock, I went to bed, he said, I dreamed I saw my old mommy come up to my bedside, and she said to me, honey, rise up, and put your clothes on, and go down to the city called Moahat, and help Brother Branham to pray for you, you're going to get your sight, he says, do you believe that Brother Branham, I said, I believe it all my heart, he said, my old mommy never told me a lie in her life and I got up and put on my clothes and my wife helped me to the bus station and we went over to the auditorium and they told us you are here and we come over here and we're standing here and it's raining as hard as it could rain. I looked at him, I put my arms around him and I said, Lord God, I don't know but somehow he sat in and I'm certain that you let his old mommy come to him in a dream to tell him that he was going to get his sight. And so, and he's so sure that he's going to get his sight, Lord God, let it be now. And as no more than said that, and he started batting his eyes, he said, thank you, Lord. And I said, can you see me, uncle? And he said, sure, I can't see. He said, I know I was going to see. My wife said, honey, can you really see? He said, sure, you want to see that red car sitting there? said, sure, I can see. A great scream went up from everywhere, and the people glorified God. What was it? He was certain that God had spoke to him in that dream. And if God certain by a dream, how much more certain is he by his word? Be certain. Hold on to it. God will bring it to you pass. Let us pray, Lord. When I think of all many of the experiences, I don't know today where that man is, thou knowest, I we never have the privilege of looking at him again on earth, but no doubt sometime across the river yonder, when we have both climbed the golden stairs into your kingdom, I shall see him there, because he was certain. He couldn't read your word, but you spoke to him a dream, and by his truthful mother, and he was certain that his mother wouldn't lie. And if you had sent him in a dream of his mother, and he knew that he was sure that he was going to get his sight, I believe, Father, that's the reason you gave it to him. He moved from his bed. He went into 
action, he put his faith to work, and you confirmed his faith by giving him his sight. There are many sitting here, Lord, today, many out in the regional land that read the word and had the promises, but has never been just sure of it. God, let them be certain today that if God has said, so he has to keep that word right. And sometimes he let reaction come just to see what we will do. And every person now that here in the invisible audience, let them take a hold of your word, your promise, confess your sins and unbelief, and hold on to that promise until daylight breaks for them. Grant it, Lord. May they be sure that and certain that you'll keep your promise, every one of them. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. God bless you. How many are certain that God keeps his promise? We used to sing an old song over in the Baptist church. His promise is true. He will not forsake you. God is still on the throne. Do you ever sing it? Let's see your hands, all that knows it. Give us a court, sister. God is still on the throne and he knows it. He, and he remembers his own. And he ever remembers his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. Wonder, Brother Duffield, if you can help me lead it. All right, let's sing it. God is still on his throne. He never forsaketh his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. How many believe that? Raise up your hand. Let's stand while we sing it now all together. Lift up your hands to God as we sing it. All right, again, God is still on the throne. He never forsakes his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. Now turn around and shake hands with somebody near you. Let's sing it again. Now as we have, uh, as we are sh uh, we are shaking hands, all you Methodists and Baptists and the Presbyterians and Lutherans and Pentecostals make up with each other, chew each other's chewing gum, <laughs> just have fellowship, just really have a good time together. All right, sister, let's sing it again. Everybody, we're off the air, I guess. God is still on there. You believe it? Raise your hand now. He never forsakes his own. His name is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. All believers that say amen. Amen. We're off the air now. So you can holler amen real loud. Amen. God is still on the throne. He will never forsake his own. The trials distress us and burdens suppress us. He never will leave us alone. Amen. He is everlasting God from eternity to eternity. He is still God when his old world so hit with sin till it's got a headache burn around it. Staggering like a drunk man coming home at night. Some of these days sin is gone beyond the stars and the moon and she will burst and fly to eternity. But God's on the throne. Amen. Amen. I feel Pentecostal right now. Amen. All time salvation, the power of God, the Holy Ghost. God is still good. All right, Brother Duffield. 